that is a rep. I'm Matt, Matt Vulcan. Uh, I'm the brewer here at Vulcan Road Brewing House. Yeah, I was a home brewer. I was a graphic designer originally, and then I was home brewing a lot. Working part time at a place for about a year, just getting trained up, and still doing freelance graphic design on the side, and then just went full time into it after that. Pops wise, I suppose there's no. There's the difference is really in flavour, because I mean, a lot of places are great, because it's like England, well, Britain, Germany, Poland, Sweden, the US, New Zealand, and so on. Like, everywhere grows them. But each place has a certain sort of style they grow in, so in this film we use Cascade, which is, we use English Cascade and American Cascade. You know, the same variety of pop where they grow changes, where they taste the same types of Cascade, so it's US Cascade, which is more orangey, fruity. Uh, English Cascade is a bit more IV, just has some citrus in there. A tiny wee bit of WGV, is it? Goldings, the English Goldings variety, it's a bit more, uh, that's just uh, very much IV. Should get an overall quite nice balance. Do you know where it comes from, the name? So, because it it's, it's not from India, it's from, it's Jet was from Britain, but when it was like British Raj and stuff in India. And to send over the ales, they had to make because the hops are a natural preservative, so they had to make they make them a little bit stronger, a little bit more hoppy. This is how the story goes. Um, make it stronger, a bit more hoppier, so it would survive the journey. So they ship it over to India for the British troops, and they stuff it with loads and loads of hops, like dust dry hopping now, which is a really big thing. Uh, put loads of hops in the barrels and stuff, so they get it would get would not get oxidised and go off before it got there. So. Uh, so this is the mash tun. Uh, it's just going to filter plates in the bottom. Mashing in, just the mashing in down. So you mash in, grain the water together at a certain temperature, so there's sort of a specific range. So in the range for brewing, sort of a good range is obviously 64 and 69. If you want to higher and lower, that's just my point. Okay, there's a certain, the amylase in there. So you have to spit the breaks down starch into sugar. That works at very specific temperatures. So if you're slightly hot like we are today, 76, 68 ish, you get a slightly sweet finish. If you want something like 65 or something like that, we'll get a bit dry. Like a little less sweet and stuff. Yeah, that's good. 67.8, not 67.9. Very good sort. About 68 ish, anyway, these days. On the nose! I'll sit there for an hour. After the hour's up, we'll start draining that off and put it into our copper or kettle, uh, which is big and shiny. Uh, and that will uh, boil what's called the wort. The wort is the, it's not beer yet, it's unfermented multi liquid. So, we can just hold the beer down. There's three elements in here that are going to heat the wort up. I want to heat up to boil, so we'll fully boil it for an hour. So, this amount of liquid, we're going to make about a thousand litres of beer today, so it takes a fair amount of time to heat that up. So, it's three pretty thousand litres. So, that's on now, let that do its thing. Can you kind of see? You can't see it all. From the original, when the first one in there, it was a lot cloudy, but you see maybe in the middle, even just there's a slight, there's actually a middle bit that's slightly hazy, you kind of see the slight separation. So you just as it's going in now, it's much clearer, it's starting to mix around a bit now. So also we transfer it to our fermenter, we'll add our yeast. So we go for a heat exchanger which cools down the work. Go to the fermenter, put in our yeast, and that'll ferment down. Depends on the strength of it, ferment at different rates. So if it's a few for do, like I do a, a pilsner, which is essentially a lager, that takes two and a half weeks to ferment. Whereas I've got four um, percent like best bitter tank right now, and it's just literally super five days. After that, depending on what I'm making again, I'll dry hop it, so I'll add hops in after it's finished fermenting, and that'll just give it a load of um, a load more sort of like hoppy flavour. Well, the American ones are really, really good. I've used them a lot before, so I, um, I know what I'll get from them. Very more modern stuff, more like um, one style of pear dowels are the big, hoppy, hazy, and they're a lot sweeter. 
it's, that's more like the New England style compared to us. Like, mine isn't that, but it's, it, it is. It's hazy. I like hazier, sweeter, hoppier style pear nails. Um, whereas we have a we have a the song, which is the pear nail kind of OK style, which was on before I sort of took over. And I was my plan was to get rid of it, um, like get my own thing in, or just change it slowly to my style of thing. But any time I would just sort of do a slight variant of it, people just pick up straight away. They'd be like, "Has this changed? Has this changed?" So I've just Take it back to what it was, and I just don't want to play around with that anymore. So I, I have to clear that one out. A lot of people whinge, and um, I have to sort of stick with the hops and the bass mold that he sort of originally had. So I have played with it a little bit, but I don't really touch it too much. It's really good. If I take it too much. But it's really, it's a really nice beer, though. It's sort of like an American IPA, it's a bit bitter. Um, yeah, for sure. Was the yes is the answer. <laughs> yeah, so I brew, I brew a lot of different styles of beer for that reason. Yes, yes, I know. The work is can be hard and long. No, because I like doing it. So, <laughs> is is it hard if you like doing it? I don't know. So,